I am going to preach to you. Yesterday I told you that I'm going to talk about how to operate from where? The realm of greater works. I started by showing you that one must decrease so that Christ what increase. I showed you in the life of John the Baptist, the Bible says that there is no man greater than who? John the Baptist. Because he was the man that tapped on the revelation when it comes to, I mean, decreasing for Christ to what? Increase. Today I'm continuing. Hello? There is something God showed me, but I want to bring the word first. Who was listening to the right radio station today? Wow, God bless you. God bless you. You heard the vision I, uh, I, I narrated on the radio. I saw five what? Doves. In where? Here. As their wings was what? Expanding. There was such an atmosphere. Today, while she was seated here, ask the ladies that were with me at the office. I told them, I see angels everywhere. And I wish that God would open the eyes of the people to see. Hello? Do you want to pray in the realm of greater words? It is for you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. To me, I always tell people, in this era that we are in, if you are going to follow Jesus Christ without his power, Without his greater words, it will be very difficult. It will be, honestly speaking to you, it will be, you see, the world will push you at the place to doubt your God. Let's go to Luke chapter 11. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My sister, you are living already? Oh. Hmm. Luke chapter 11. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My eyes is open. If you are living, yesterday there was a man of God that leave, left Nicodemus that I didn't see. Let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 4 before Luke 11. Bishop Carl left. I didn't see how. It, I saw him today. I said, How did you leave? <laughs> Luke chapter 5, the verse number 4. Can we have it on the screen with all humility? The Bible says that when he has stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Simon Peter, I want you to underline that word, Simon Peter. Simon Peter. When Jesus had what? Stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your net for what? A hall. Let me stay here for the moment. He said to who? Simon Peter. He did not say to Peter, Simon. He did not say to Simon. He said to Simon Peter. Now in the realms of the spirit, know something. As somebody that has studied theology, I have come to know the power of names. Amen. Simon was the name that the parents... Of Peter gave to Peter. Now in the Greek, the word or the meaning of the name Simon is gossiper, a whisperer. Somebody, unless they don't hear, they hear from here, it will go here. And you can see it in the life of Peter. When Peter was walking with Jesus Christ, every little thing, the mouth will be brrr, brrr. Amen. Now, but when Peter, who was Simon, met Jesus Christ, the Bible says that Jesus told him, from today, you shall be called, called Peter. Amen. Now the word from today is the Greek word lego. Somebody write it down, lego. The word lego means putting to stop. Something that frustrates divine destiny. Are you here? I always tell people to understand the Bible 
And to break the code of the Bible, you have to understand the culture of the Bible. The language of the Bible. If not, you can't get deep things. So observe this. Peter was with Jesus Christ. Now that gossip of destiny that influenced the divine destiny was of Peter was what? Put to an end. When he was with who? Jesus Christ. Some of us, certain curses, certain bloodline powers, certain names our parents gave us is the cause of where we are and what we are going through. Oh, come on. Can I have a witness here? In, in my country, there are some people that they are named suffering. That means you will suffer to the end of your life. It's a name. Amen. But when you experience Jesus Christ, Jesus put to stop any name, any attachment that frustrate that divine destiny. And today I'm here to announce to you what you are going through is not how God created you. Oh, I don't hear your amen. Let me, let me, let me connect to the Zoom people. I think Prophet Duku, you were right. Amen. Are you here? Now, Jesus said to Simon Peter, what? Put or throw your net. Let's go back to the verse number five. Observe here. Verse, verse four, rather. I want to make a point here. Put out into the deep water and lower your net for what? A hole. Verse five. Follow me carefully, please. Verse five. And Simon Peter, you see the name was there again. Peter is into bra bracket here. Now, the scripture want to show us something. So now, Simon is now delivered from any power forcing, pressuring, influencing his what? Divine destiny. So now we are talking or Jesus is talking to a man that is in the wheel and what? The plans of God. Now he says, Peter answered, Master, we toil all night, exhaustingly, and caught not ah. I thought that now Peter is in his divine destiny, but still struggling. This is the life of many of us here, many watching. We pray in tongues, but still struggling. We see visions, but still what? Struggling. Oh, you, 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 you can feel when the Holy Spirit is in the room, but still what? Struggling. You can lead worship for people to have their miracles. When you speak, when you preach, people cannot stand. But still, when you drop the mic, you are still what? Am I talking to real witness here? Sometimes when you come to church, the way your makeup is nicely put in your face, people think that you, you, you just came from heaven. <laughs> Sometimes you are doing the work of God with all eagerness, passion, with the hunger of God. But when church is over, you are asking God, God, why me? God, why this? Peter was with Jesus, connected to Jesus, but still there was something in Peter's life. I'm talking about how to operate in what? In the realm of greater works. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior is not enough. Worshiping him and lifting your holy hands is not enough. There is certain mysteries that you got to know. You got to understand. You got to come to a place to know how to operate in the realm of greater works. Peter says, sir, I have worked all night. La Listen, Peter was working. Peter was not a lazy man. Because Peter understood the hands that does not what? Work. Does not do what? Eat. Some of us, we are hard working people. 
hard-working man hard-working woman you do there are some women here you do the work of a man you do the work when we come and you are lifting metals we will not believe when we see you like you are something but all the hard work you have nothing to show Look at the word Peter said. Sir, we have worked all night exhaustingly. We are tired. Physically tired. Mentally tired. Emotionally tired. Spiritually tired. Tired everywhere. We are tired. Is somebody here tired? Come on. I came, I came, I came to give you a good news. Is somebody tired of praying? Tired of fasting? Tired of doing everything? But yet nothing to show. Are you here? Continue. And what happened? He said, and caught no, verse 5, sorry, 7, follow me. And caught nothing. The one read, projecting the scripture, you are confusing me. Please, if I don't tell you to move, don't move. He said, and caught nothing in our net. But, listen here, but on the ground of your word. Now, what does that mean on the ground? Ground means foundation. So, your word is what I am going to what? I am going to now stand on. Oh, there is a deep revelation here. So, it's not because you worship that God has to move you in the realm of greater works. It's because you worship on the ground of the word. Am I talking to somebody here? It's not because you love God that things should work for you. You have to what? You have to love God on the ground of the word. I always tell the church there is something we don't understand. A whole almighty God, a powerful God will tell you as a child that I have lifted my word above my name and you don't take the word serious. What's wrong with you? The whole God that created the heaven and the earth will tell you my word is above my neighbor. Hallelujah. And you don't follow the word. You don't move for the word. You are not founded on the word. Today I pray for somebody that the word of God will be your foundation. I pray for somebody that the struggle will be over because you are going to stand upon the word to operate in the realm of greater works you have to what you have to stand on the ground of the word the church today listen the church love prophetic word you see anytime the children of God are, are hungry to hear from God God will speak but God speaking to you does not mean that he is manifesting it if you are not on the ground of his word the Bible says all things will pass away but the word of God will not pass away the word of God carry power Jesus said the word I speak to you it is spirit and life oh my God my God my God my God imagine if this word is spirit and life and there is a death situation in your life and this word come in that death situation cannot stay a lot of us many things are dead in our lives and, and, and it's too dead and stinking because we are not standing on the ground of his word. I tell somebody, I said, prophecy will always be there. Some of us, if we don't even want to prophesy, 
God will pull us in the spirit to prophesy. But the saddest part is many receive prophecy and they end up being confused. Sometimes they end up even speaking against the prophet that God used that they are false prophet because the prophecy is not coming to pass. But they have forgotten that the prophecy they receive, they are not standing on the ground of the world. Can I give you a revelation? When you read the Old Testament, anytime God will appear to a prophet, for a prophet to speak, the prophet have a salutation that they always bring before the prophetic word. They always declare that sayest the Lord. That was sayest the Lord. You don't understand. The word say in the Hebrew is the word. Do you know Bishop, 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 clap for Bishop, clap for Bishop. I'm saying Bishop now. Do you know the meaning of the word prophecy? Prophecy in the Greek is prophemiho. Are you here? Oh, are you, are you enjoying? I want to give you some, some serious revelation. Now, prophecy in the Greek is prophemiho. Pro Fe me who now what is that? What does that mean? It means a spoken word, a spoken word spoken from or before time, a word that is released before time, that is released into time through the prophet for manifestation. A word that is what released before time. When we are talking about before time, we are talking in the realm of God, not from the past. When you were born, when you were created, when God was creating you, he has a word over your head. So when the prophet comes, the prophet pick up the word that was spoken before you were created and bring it into your realm now. When the word comes now, it must manifest. But why is it not manifested? Because when the word comes now, you are not standing on the word. For the prophetic to manifest, you have to stand on the ground of the word. Because every word of God, everything of God that can manifest, that can grow, cannot grow outside the atmosphere of the world. Am I preaching? So your issue is not the prophecy that prophet Akka is giving you. Because that word I am giving you is not new. It has been spoken. When God formed you, the word is there. Even if I choose to not to speak, God has still spoken the word. That you will be rich. That you will get married. That you will move as he has designed. The word is spoken. Are you here? The Bible says the word of God is what? Yes and amen. Now the issue is not me speaking. The issue is where are you standing? Some of us, we are standing on our money. You will fail. Ah, can I help you? Do you know that every time God sends you a prophet, God will test you? Every time. Let me tell you. A lot of people think that when a word is speaking, I mean spoken, right? It has to take years for it to manifest. No. Every word that a prophet release is a prophet just speaking the word. But the prophetic grace from the realm of God is already spoken. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, the word was there. When God was forming you, God shaped your nose according to your word. God shaped your eyes according to your word. God shaped your head according to the word. God gave you that beauty. If you are short like prophet Obed, God made you short because of the word. If you are taller like me, God made you tall because oh, I'm not talking to somebody 
I always tell people, me, I don't have muscles to fight. God gave me a mouth. You come with muscles, I'll come with my mouth. Because when God was forming me, he had the word for my destiny. And he set my height. He set my eyes, my nose, my hand, my body to feed her. Ah, cause am I speaking to somebody? It is good to love to hear the word. It is good to love to hear prophecy. But are you standing on the word? When I'm, when I'm prophesying, say, my sister, come. I, take, take, look at this. Example I'm giving. I want you to sow a seed of $500 to support the kingdom work. What comes in the mind of the sister? This prophet with C, 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 C. But the saddest thing is, the sister does not know that there is a word over her head. And for the word, you see the weather forecast people. They read the weather, right? They have things. They know that when the cloud is moving this way, there's going to be a rain. They know that when the cloud is shaped this way, the sun will appear. They know that when the cloud moves this way, it will be cold. So what they do, they study the clouds and then come to tell you there will be rain this week from Monday to Sunday. You listen to them because you know that they are expert in what they do. You know that they carry some level of knowledge and some level of education to do what they do but when a prophet come to you and says sister sow a seed you say I don't have now if you say that you know what you're doing that word that is spoken in the realm of God that must what speak into your now for manifestation you just stop it so the word is still in the realm Oh, I'm not talking to somebody. You see, a prophet can just tell you, yesterday you guys saw those that were sick with the shoulder. There's, there's a lady, I just pick up a tissue from this man of God. I throw it down. I say, pick it. It doesn't make sense. I need healing. It's prayer you must pray for me, Lord. What is my healing got to do with the tissue on the floor for me to pick up? If you are not prophetic, you will lose the word. And the word will not manifest because the prophet, God has given them knowledge, certain ability to know when the cloud is moving and to tell the people what to do. So when I was praying for the woman I can study that the cloud is moving this way only prayer will not help her I have to watch something in her spirit so the spirit of God told me draw a tissue as she pick with faith she is moving towards the cloud what operation I'm teaching you what the prophetic is some of us that's why you have been receiving prophecies upon prophecies and nothing is happening it's not the prophets. You don't understand certain things. Are you here? Are you here? Who remember Mary? The mother of Jesus Christ. Who remember Mary? When the angel came to Mary, the first thing the angel said, peace unto you. The one that is highly favored by God. And the angel started talking. You will bow a son. The Holy Spirit will come on you. That, 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 that Mary look at the angel. Because Mary has never, you know, come under a prophetic atmosphere. Mary listening, 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 listening. And Mary asks the angel, how can it be? Now, after Mary asks the angel, how can it be? The angel continue to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Then... Mary tap on something we call the flow of the prophetic. And then Mary changed her utterances and said, may it be unto me. From how can it be to may it be unto me? If Mary stood at the place of how can it be, Mary wouldn't have been able to carry baby Jesus. 
Even though it was spoken in the realm of God before Mary was created, that she's going to be the one to carry baby Jesus. You want to operate in the realm of greater works. Change your utterances. Peter said, Sir, I have toiled all night and couldn't catch nothing. Whilst Peter was speaking, observe, Jesus never spoke back. He was quiet. Until Peter said, by your word. Do you know why? Because Jesus has already released the word. And this word was already before time in the realm of God. That the time is coming that Peter will what? Peter will cause a manifestation. When we are talking about, that's why I'm teaching you that Greek word, prophecy, prophemiho. Anytime you receive a prophecy and you understand how to position yourself, that prophecy must not delay. Many delayed prophecy is the reason that we are not standing on the ground of the word. So when the word comes to you, you begin to use your mind. You begin to question like Peter. You begin to talk. Oh, this prophet. <laughs> I had a woman that came on my Zoom. That woman was frustrated, depressed, because she was going through divorce. And it was very hard and difficult on her. And her sister, her junior sister said, I go on this Zoom. And this prophet, I know that when you come on the Zoom, God has a word for you. The lady stepped on the Zoom late. Late was I was prophesying. The moment I saw the lady entered, the Lord told me, tell the lady that he's going to, she's going to marry again. And describe the husband to the lady. I described the husband. This man who have the beard, top, this is the lady. <laughs> I said, woman, like you know, I will ask you, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? The woman's prophet. I'm just going through a serious divorce right now. And I don't think I'm going to marry again. What I'm going through now? No way. Tell Jesus, I don't need no man. And I said, sister, you are going to marry again. And that's how you are going to do that you met a prophet and you are meeting a prophet. I said, this is how it's going to happen. You're going to meet the man in two weeks. So the sister called me, not even two weeks. She said, oh my God. She said, what? He said, my friend wanted me to give him something in the car. But my friend came with another friend, boyfriend. The moment that boyfriend of my friend, boyfriend means a friend, not this world now is corrupted, you know. <laughs> Let me explain myself. Now, when the guy saw me, the guy told my friend that something in him is moving towards me. And he said, prophet, the description you gave, is exactly that man. But what I've been through, I'm not encouraged to get married. I said, shut up <laughs> and go for it. Today, you know me, I'll tell you straight forward. Today, the sister is thanking me every day. A sweet man. How, oh my God. This, this man has caused this sister to forget what she went through. Tell somebody there is a sheer word for you. If you will remain on the ground of the word. Let me do it quick so that we will enter into the moment that we are waiting for. Bring me back to the scripture. Verse number six. Verse number six. Yes. And when they had done this, they what? They caught a great number of fish. A man that have what? That have toiled the whole night. It means that Peter did not only focus on one place. The whole entire river. Peter threw net in. Everywhere. But still, there was no fish. Peter said, by your word, and Peter threw the net. The Bible says that they caught what? A great number of fish. And as their nets were at the point of what? 
Ah, isn't it the same place Peter threw the net before? What happened this time? Ah, this time Peter decided to dwell on the ground of the word. Let me tell you, in this three nights remain to finish. Where you went that you were denied, by the words you will receive, you will be accepted. Oh, your level of hallelujah is so low for me. Listen, the immigration that refused you visa, you are going back again on the ground of the world. And they will tell you, ma'am, congratulations. Oh, I don't know who I'm prophesying to here. Are you the one rise up and shout and receive? That man that said, I think we are not compatible. That man is about to call you again. He said, baby, how are you doing? Because you are about to stand on the ground of the world. Something I have discovered when it comes to some women. Anytime a man said, I don't know, they start to cry. Do you know that only women have caught the revelation that our tears will be held in a bottle in heaven? That's why they cry too much. They are the only people that caught it. They want to go to heaven and get multiple gallons of tears. Ask them, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> when things are not going well, choose to dwell on the ground of the world. Today I came to prophesy, to speak what I've been spoken in the realm of God, into the realm of now, for your manifestation. Say, stand up.